Hello everyone, we all know that Egypt is one of the most visited places in the world. But what do we know about this country? We all know that there are majestic pyramids, the big sphinx without the nose, the popular resort of Sharm el Sheikh, and famous Hurghada. However, today we will dive into the world history to find out the most exciting facts about ancient Egypt, which will definitely make you strive to learn more about Egyptian culture and society. But first things first, let's go! Now let's start with the most important things. It was a real sensation that shocked the world. At the end of 2022, after many years of useless searches, archaeologists managed to find a huge ancient city that does not appear in any historical chronicle not far from the legendary Valley of the Kings. This amazing find was made in the Sahara on the territory of modern Egypt. The sands of the desert covered it for several millennia. And to be more precise, it was there for about 3,000 years. Surprisingly, the city has been perfectly preserved. It has not been looted. Therefore, archaeologists had a unique opportunity to see how the Egyptians lived in a rich city many years ago. During the period of the power of the pharaohs. By the way, historians suggest that the found settlement was founded during the reign of Amenhotep III. We will find out later if it's true. After all, scientists have to study the developed infrastructure of the city, its temples, palaces, and necropolis in detail. At the same time, archaeologists called their find the Lost City of Gold, and all because of the abundance of gold jewelry and household items found there. So we have one serious question. How did such a magnificent city go unnoticed for so long? According to scientists, it turned out to be abandoned due to some kind of catastrophe, like an earthquake or an epidemic. Then it was buried under a thick layer of sand and forgotten for centuries. And only thanks to modern technologies and the efforts of archaeologists, the Golden City was able to see the light again. Let's move on. And what about the oldest mummy that was created about 4,300 years ago? It goes without saying that it may be the oldest mummy in the world. Such an amazing find was made quite recently not far from Cairo. The mysterious tomb was found at the bottom of a 15-meter shaft near the Steppe Pyramid in Saqqara. These are the remains of a man, and they were stored in a limestone sarcophagus sealed with a special solution. Scientists suggest that the mummy belonged to a man named Hikashapis who lived during the 5th to 6th century BC. By the way, it wasn't alone in that mysterious tomb. Another tomb was discovered nearby. It was decorated with scenes from everyday life. And it belonged to a priest and overseer of the nobility named Numjadef. He served under the last pharaoh of the 5th century called Unas. And another tomb kept nearby belonged to a man named Mari. By the way, he was described as the keeper of secrets and assistant to the great ruler of the palace. Now there's an active study of ancient remains. And let's see what we can find out. Mummies with golden tongues have been found in Egypt. It looks like they are desperately trying to say something. And this is the case when the find is intriguing in earnest. They were found in the Kuvesna Necropolis, which is located in the central part of the Nile River Delta. Some of these mummies were surrounded by golden scarabs and lotus flowers. But most of all, scientists were surprised by the fact that there were golden copies of their tongues in their mouths. The purpose of the golden tongues is a huge mystery. There is an assumption that they were put into bodies during embalming, Allegedly, this golden tongue helped the deceased person to navigate in the afterlife. Let's just say that such an unusual detail was necessary in order to win over the king and the judge of the afterlife, the god Osiris. However, we'll find out if it's true a bit later.
One of the most interesting facts about ancient Egypt is undoubtedly connected with its mysterious rulers. We are talking about the pharaohs who were deities in a certain sense. Thus, the pharaohs were not only ancient Egyptian kings, but were also considered descendants of the gods who were given their power from somewhere above. In addition, they had immense power over the land and the people, being military leaders, heads of government, and important religious figures. As you can guess, the pharaohs ruled with the help of various advisors, including viziers, priests, and other people. The descendants of the gods and the bearers of their power were at the top of the hierarchy. At the same time, they were followed by their most trusted advisors and viziers, and then by other high priests and nobles. Government officials, soldiers, and scribes made up the next levels of the hierarchy, followed by merchants and artisans. Ordinary workers, farmers, and slaves represented the lower levels of ancient Egyptian society. Also an interesting fact is that social status in ancient Egypt was inherited, but it could be changed throughout life. For example, if a farmer's son or daughter has learned some other craft through education, then it was possible to climb the steps of the hierarchy and become a merchant, a healer, or take an important position in the government. The ancient Egyptians believed that the rulers of the ancient Egyptian kingdoms could be exclusively men. And then they even tried to adhere to this principle. However, history still remembers an exception to the rule. It was one female pharaoh, and we're not talking about Cleopatra, if you're thinking about her right now. Cleopatra was also one of the last pharaohs of Egypt, but her reign came after the period of ancient Egypt. In the ancient Egyptian civilization, only one woman was considered a true pharaoh. We are talking about Hathisput from the 18th century of Egypt. She was the head of Egypt for 15 years, and it was in the 15th century BC. This person is often remembered when it comes to the first great woman in our history. Let's now talk about what views the ancient Egyptians had on clothes. And believe me, they can safely be called very unusual. The fact is that women in ancient Egypt wore dresses. It is a typical piece of women's clothing of the modern era. Everything is clear here. But the most interesting thing is that Egyptian men also dressed in skirts and other elements of clothing that are peculiar to women. Moreover, they used aromatic oils and cosmetics while creating makeup on a daily basis. When we think of ancient Egypt, two of the most famous names immediately pop into our head, Tutankhamun and Cleopatra. That's just, there is one issue here. It turns out that the beautiful Cleopatra actually hails from Alexandria and was part of a long line of Greek Macedonians descended from Ptolemy I, one of the companions of Alexander the Great. The Ptolemaic dynasty ruled Egypt from 323 to 30 BC, and most of its leaders remained Greeks by religion and all other aspects. Cleopatra was one of the first representatives of the Pleomatic dynasty who spoke the Egyptian language. What an unexpected twist! Do you remember pharaohs in pictures and movies? They are neat, fit, and strong since they have a divine origin. In fact, everything was different, completely different. The royal diet of that time consisted of beer, wine, bread, and honey. It had a hell of a lot of sugar and other carbohydrates. Studies prove that this significantly affected the royal waistlines. Scientists have studied this topic for a long time and finally came to the conclusion that many Egyptian rulers were overweight and had diabetes. 
By the way, Hathisput is the best proof of this theory, and though the sarcophagus with her remains depicts the legendary ruler as slim and fit, historians still believe that in reality she was quite obese and balding. The facts of ancient Egypt show us that a powerful ancient civilization began using coins only in the 5th century BC, about 100 years before Alexander the Great became the ruler of its lands. Moreover, the earliest of them were not real coins in our usual understanding, it was more about some standardized pieces of metal. But what happened before that? The ancient Egyptians could not live without money. In fact, they have been using a special barter system for centuries based on about three ounces. Prices for barter trade were fixed throughout the country. Workers were paid in grain. Lower level workers earned about 400 pounds of grain per month and higher level workers, foremen for example, got 550 pounds. Farmers exchanged their products for other goods in accordance with the existing trade relations. And what about women's rights in those days? In social terms, the role of women was lower than men. But this did not affect the fact that women in ancient Egypt had real legal and financial independence. For example, Egyptian women could easily buy and sell their real estate, could be a part of a jury, make wills, and even conclude business contracts. Not bad, right? Basically, these women supported life and did household chores, However, those of them who worked received the same decent pay for their work as many men. Unlike the women of ancient Greece, who were in fact the property of their husbands, Egyptian women had every right to file for divorce and remarry. Historians have found out that many Egyptian couples had a prototype of a modern marriage contract, where all the property and wealth of the spouses were prescribed before marriage. Why would they do that? even in those days when a woman divorced so she could count on some compensation. It's no secret that the afterlife was one of the central aspects of ancient Egyptian religion. So what was the main purpose of mummification? Well, let's find an answer to this question. Of course, it consisted in preserving the bodies of the dead so that they could live well in that very afterlife. It should be noted that mummification was an absolute luxury of the rich. In addition, the process itself was not easy at all. To implement it, it was necessary to remove most of the organs from the body except for the heart, since the ancient Egyptians considered it the home of the soul, then preserve the body in various minerals and oils, wrap it in a linen cloth, and in some cases, cover the body with molded plaster. Only after such a long process, the deceased person was placed in eternal rest in a stone sarcophagus. Let's talk about this topic a bit more. Do you know that in addition to the body, it was customary to put various things of rulers in sarcophagi? For example, in the tombs of powerful pharaohs, archaeologists have repeatedly found quite unusual objects and no one ever expected to see in such a place. First of all, the pharaohs often retired with the mummified bodies of their cats. As you know, these animals in ancient Egypt were very revered and considered truly sacred. So according to their beliefs, cats had to accompany their own owners on a journey to the afterlife. Also, the bodies of the servants of the pharaohs were found in the tombs. Yes, you're right, in the earliest periods of civilization, servants were killed after the death of their master. Only later they began to use the models of servants of the pharaohs. Toilets were often found in the tombs. Why would they need one? Well, in case the powerful deceased rulers need them in the next life.
Pepi II Neferkare was a pharaoh from the 6th dynasty who lived around 2300 to 2206 BC. He was at the helm of power for a long time. He spent there about 64 years, and during all this time he managed to do a lot. For example, he married five times and established trade with Nubians. But the ancient ruler was a slob and completely indifferent to domestic politics. However, this is not the most important thing. In fact, he hated annoying flies. Pepi II Neferkare even invented his own method of dealing with these insects. Do you immediately think about traditional fans? You're wrong. Pharaoh surrounded himself with naked slaves smeared with honey. Flies landed on them, stuck to them, and then they were killed. You understood correctly, these were some kind of live traps for insects. How about the comfort of slaves? Come on, few people were interested in this aspect at that time. It's hard to believe, but the facts of ancient Egypt show us that the Egyptians used toothpaste several thousand years ago. In addition, they even invented it. Naturally, there is no point in comparing them with modern analogs. Already at that time, it was a kind of tooth powder consisting of myrrh and three ingredients that most people would not like to have in their toothpaste these days. Pumice stone, ashes from bull hooves, and burnt eggshells. What a good recipe. And what about toothbrushes? The ancient Egyptians did not bother much and simply applied a healing powder to their teeth, rubbing it with their fingers. In the modern world, dogs help the police and many other services in carrying out certain work. However, for the Egyptians, this was too banal a decision. That is why they used baboons as guard animals. Trained animals were often depicted in Egyptian frescoes. The most distinguished of them were even mummified after death, thus giving them the opportunity to get into the afterlife. And primates were also excellent live alarm clocks because they had a habit of yelling loudly in the morning. Perhaps you didn't know, but not only the rulers and their inner circle had access to first-class medicine. Was it really first-class? For example, peasants were given special bags with mouse bones that could be worn around their necks. In theory, this could help with the problem of urinary incontinence. Another unusual remedy for baldness looked like this. A mixture of fat from a mountain goat, a cat, a hippopotamus, and a crocodile. It was necessary to rub the problem areas of the scalp but in the medical papyrus of Kahuna, it is told that honey, mud, and crocodile manure are excellent means to protect against unwanted pregnancy. The supposedly acidic nature of such a mixture could disperse the development cells at conception. Can you imagine if we were using such unique tools now? Then a real hunt would have opened for crocodiles. In general, the ancient Egyptians were one of the first societies that began to practice birth control methods. But there were also those in ancient Egypt who should not have worried about the issue of fertility. Of course, these are majestic pharaohs. One of the most prolific rulers was Ramses II the Great. Scientists believe that at the time of his death, when the pharaoh was already over 90 years old, he had more than 170 children. How is this possible? Everything's very simple. The pharaoh lived life to its fullest. He had eight official wives and almost 100 concubines who bore him 111 sons and 67 daughters over the years. I don't know if this is true, but Ramses the Great clearly wanted to leave a significant mark in history. Even in such a way. This is an interesting fact. Portraits of representatives of barbaric peoples were applied to the soles of Tutankhamun's sandals. Are you surprised? The main idea was that the pharaoh trampled his enemies literally every second and everywhere. 
In addition, the opponents of the ancient Egyptian kingdom were depicted on royal thrones in order to make it clear to others that the king of Egypt tramples them with his throne. In addition, Tutankhamun always wore socks under his sandals. By the way, the first socks were invented by the Egyptian people somewhere in 5000 BC, although the oldest one dates back to the age of 1,700 years. The life of the pyramid builder was not easy. After analyzing preserved skeletons of workers, scientists saw signs of arthritis and other diseases. At the same time, these workers are not slaves at all, but hired people. Yes, among the builders of the famous tombs were both experienced craftsmen and temporary workers, some of whom were very proud of their craft. These people received food, drink, and medical care, and they were housed in camps near the construction site. The work was difficult and even dangerous, so there were tragic cases. Those who died during construction were buried near the pyramid, while slaves would not have been awarded with such an honor. Despite the fact that the Egyptians considered the pharaoh to be a kind of living god, Ordinary workers were not afraid to gather protests and demand better working conditions. One of the most striking examples of this is the case that occurred in the 12th century BC during the reign of the Egyptian ruler Ramses III. During the construction of the royal necropolis, the workers were not paid for the work done. People quickly came out to protest, and their action was registered as the first protest against the government in history. In fact, it was a sit-in. Workers simply entered the nearest funeral temples and refused to leave until their complaints were heard. The protest turned out to be successful. As a result, every employee was paid all debts. Scientists have made various studies of the body of the young pharaoh, but it was the scan of his skeleton that showed everyone in amazing detail. Tutankhamun was embalmed without a heart and without a chest. It looks strange, especially thinking of the moment about the House of the Soul. Such a significant deviation from the traditional Egyptian burial practice shows us that the ancient ruler could have received a terrible injury incompatible with light. Many Egyptologists believe that the most likely cause of Tutankhamun's death is his meeting with a huge hippopotamus. Most likely, he went hunting for a wild animal, and it was not successful for the pharaoh. The Tarkin dress, named after the cemetery of the same name in Cairo, was discovered there during excavations back in 1913. And it is rightfully considered the oldest piece of clothing in the whole world. According to the latest radiocarbon dating analysis, the Tarkin dress is more than 5,000 years old, which is incredibly impressive. It is assumed that it belonged to the founder of the first dynasty of the early kingdom of ancient Egypt, King Narmer. The dress is currently on display at the Petrie Museum of Egyptian Archaeology in London. So anyone can see it live. 